G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south west hand side of the map, we've got a Lucifron 7, currently ranked number one on the ladder, playing the Rus, going to be opening up with a hunting cabin, no early scout going to be coming out of his town center, and uh, going to be looking to add in a lumber camp in a house, of course, as you would expect, as he is playing the Rus. He is beginning to move out over onto the map and doing a great little job. So as he's heading up towards his opponent's base, he is stopping by and just killing some deer along the way. Super, super smart play from him. I love it. Let's take a look over at his opponent's... Uh, his opponent who has spawned in is HSTL Ho Ho DFX, who is going to be playing the Abbasid Dynasty. Now, I don't know who this player is, but he is rank 89, and I've been advised that he is considered a top Age of Empires 1 player. So I don't know exactly where he's from. I know that there's a big Vietnamese community that plays in uh, Age of Empires 1, so he could be Vietnamese, but um, I don't know exactly what we're going to be calling him, because uh, maybe we call him Hostel. Maybe we call him... Yeah, I don't know, Ho-Ho, like Santa Claus, I was thinking, maybe. But uh, he's going to be opening up with a double scout against Rus, so that is definitely the wise choice. He's actually found both of his hunts, and it looks like Lucifron's actually found both, or at least the first of his hunts. Uh, so going to be unfortunate for him for Lucifron finding that so early. Uh, so Lucifron going to be in a pretty decent position, already going to be heading up towards that 100 bounty mark. Second scout going to be coming out for him from that hunting cabin. Going to be looking for his second hunt, which is out over to the east of his base. And uh, it looks like... Uh, so, Ho-Ho is actually Dutch, apparently. So, thank you very much for letting me know. Uh, I appreciate that very much, Zathris. But uh, this is uh, this is definitely going to shape up to be a good game. So, for anybody wondering about Lucifron, Lucifron, um, he is an incredibly talented player. Uh, so, played in Genesis, obviously uh, was through to the main event. Um, it did very, very well over there. Uh, and now going to be looking in this, uh, this winter... Um, series, so I guess I should probably tell you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, so this is part of EGC TV's Winter Series, uh, and the Winter Series is an event that is hosted by EGC TV, so I'll leave a link in the description over towards the EGC Discord, I encourage that you go check that one out, make sure you join up, if you're interested in seeing more, or more content like this, because they host a lot of events, and subsequently, you know, they're going to ping you anytime that you are, uh, or anytime that they go live, and so if you're interested in that sort of thing, make sure you go check that out. But uh, let's have a look at Lucifron. So I can see he's got one sheep just hanging out here. So there's always this little period that I get worried about when I'm playing the Wuss, where you may potentially go idle. He's got two villagers out on wood already. Looks like he is going to be slaughtering that sheep up. Third villager going to be coming out on wood. Going to be dropping down his golden gate very, very quickly. Uh, looks like he's got six villagers on it. So going up with a very early golden gate here. Uh, five villagers on food in the transition. So we'll have to see how he plays it. He's going to pick up a couple of sheep down towards the south of his base. He's got three scouts out so far. So I suspect during the transition period, he's probably going to be looking to pick up a fourth scout. Uh, so we'll have to see exactly what he does. He's got four villagers on wood. So that's quite a large amount of villagers on wood. Uh, he might be looking to sell wood. Maybe that's potentially what he's thinking. But we'll have to see how he plays it. Uh, but now going to be continuing to head back towards his base. He's lured in a couple of wolves already. Sitting up on that 235 mark, he's going to be able to hit 250 very easily just with the sheep that he's, he's got following him at the moment. It's going to be more than enough to take him there. 300 gold uh, should be in the bank, or at least 300 bounty should be in the bank. He's got to be careful here not to lose this lure, though. Uh, these are falling quite far behind, but I think as long as they don't lose line of sight, they should be okay. Probably could have got a nice little block in there with uh, with Hostel, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look how he's doing. So he's going up with the economic wing. Um, and he's got quite a few villagers on gold. What has he got in store for us today? Going up with that many villagers on gold. Is he going for a... Is he going for the double... Is he going for Viper's double broadaxe build order? Could we potentially see it coming out of him? So for anybody wondering, Viper did this crazy double broadaxe build order. I really had no idea what he was doing. Like, uh, Viper... I, we were watching Viper and he spent 175 gold. I'm like, on what? And it was double broadaxe. I'm like, really? Okay, sure. Why not? Okay, you do you, Viper. I'm not going to hate. You, you are, like, the best player in the world. So, I mean, if you do it, it's got to be... <gasps> He's one gold short. He's one gold short of his professional scouts. Okay, he got it. He got it. He was one gold short of professional scouts. I don't know exactly what happened that uh, that he missed that, but I think he... Yeah, he sold. You can see that he did a trade. He was trying his best not to do a trade, and then he had to do it. He's sitting on 149 gold at the moment. So he sold wood or sold food for something. But uh, let's have a look how many scouts he's got out. He's got one scout up towards the north. Two scouts in the center of the base. So didn't go for that fourth scout in the transition period. We'll check and see what Hostel's got going on. But um, 
Now down towards the base of uh, his opponent. He is heading down there, and uh, he's going to be careful. You can see that town center actually firing off. 15 villagers in the town center actually going to be taking out this scout. So a little bit of a mistake right there from Hostel. Unfortunately, you could see that he commanded it to come back, uh, but unfortunately, it did dive back in. So really unfortunate when that happens. So he's going to be losing one of his two scouts. And uh, now let's have a look and see what upgrades we've got coming through because there is plenty of gold in the bank. So fresh food stuff is going to be the first one that's coming down. Archery range is going to be the opening for Hostel here. So curious decision. Going to be going for an early wheelbarrow as well. So really focusing on the economy. Doesn't have that plus um, that uh, 10 uh, golden age just yet. But uh, now we'll check in on Lucifron, see what he's up to. So probably going to be moving back some of his hunts. Uh, and that's exactly what he's doing. So very curiously going for his own hunts first rather than his opponent's hunts. Now, I suspect that that's something to do with having a very low food count. You can see right here that he's actually very close to running out of food. The villagers here, they are on their last f uh, food sources. And he was up on this side of the map with his, uh, with his scout. So that's something to note. Oh, look at that. Dirty little wall coming in. So if you are potentially sitting low on food, it might be a good idea. You know, instead of going for your opponent's hunts, go for your own first. Now we've got those additional scouts going to be coming out. And an early stable out from Lucifron. So he is not messing around. Uh, normally, you would not see that in this matchup or in, rather with, with the Rus. You would just see them go up directly with a, a naked fast castle. You know, throw out a few scouts. Obviously, get professional, uh, professional scouts behind that as well. But um, you would not really see that. So, uh, obviously, he's scouted out the uh, archery range of his opponent. You can see he's, he's spotting it once again here. He's continuing to look, but he, he spots that. He knows that there is a potential early game threat, and subsequently, he needs to respond to it. And that's exactly what he is doing. So, we'll take a look over towards what Hostel uh, continues to do. So, he's continuing to train up those villagers. We'll have a look at what upgrades he's got at the moment. No plus one on anything other than getting in that wheelbarrow and obviously getting through that fresh food stuffs hasn't added in a second town center just yet but i'm curious to see what he's going for because this macro is looking a little bit i wouldn't say weird to me it kind of looks like he wants to go for a fast castle but now gonna be pushing out with three archers could potentially take out the first scout scout is gonna manage to get away and we'll be heading back towards the base uh, now up towards the north side it looks like yeah some pretty cool walls that are actually coming in so utilizing the layout of this base or this map very very well i don't think the scouts are actually going to be able to get in behind here i take it all back uh it turns out that the scouts are very very easily able to get behind here because apparently that wall it, it is built though so i don't know exactly what we've got going on here but uh I'm, I'm curious to know exactly where the knights are for uh for lucifer we'll have to have a look from his perspective I think they're down here. Yeah, they're coming out now. Look at the big joust coming out. Let's see if they manage to get through. That villager's making a run for it. He's not going to have too much luck, unfortunately, as the uh, the scimitar does come out. And now that uh, that joust is going to be coming in towards, rather, the uh, the land's going to be coming in and doing a pretty decent job of collecting these nice and early. They're yet to get any upgrades on them, so Lucifer going to be falling back, and that uh, that wall not going to be able to go up. So it's, it's, I, I'm very curious to note uh, exactly what's happened here and the fact that these guys are able to get through here because normally the pillars on the wall Walls don't actually do anything. Lucifront clicking up at eight minutes, uh, despite having two lances out. This just really goes to show you how good Lucifron is. He's got a stable and double lances out, and he still clicks up at eight minutes. That is freaking wild, dude. I don't know how he does it. He's got absolute insanity on the macro, but uh, he's continuing now to bring through those uh, those deer. Doing a great job of multitasking on the way in as well. You can see those two scouts going to be coming in. 17 villagers on the Abbey of the Trinity. Rather, 14 villagers. Looks like he's chosen to put down a couple of archery rangers here. He's looking incredible in this early game. Le the, uh, the early night does go down. And uh, I'm curious to see how many of these he actually picked up. So it looks like there's four that are missing from this one. And it looks like all seven are up here towards the north. So he's only picked up three at the moment. So I wouldn't be surprised. Ooh, this wall actually never went down for for uh, for Ho-Ho. Or for Hostel. So um, that is something to note. And now Hostel going to be looking to go up as well. But uh, obviously he's a little bit more delayed than his opponent. His opponent, despite going for those professional scouts, has obviously managed to reach the next age well ahead of him. He's gone for a bit of a long wall over here towards the east of his base as well. And beginning to push out. He's got to be careful. He knows that his enemy's already got that stable out. And a single spear isn't going to be enough to stop that. But now going to be clicking up to the next age. We'll take a look and see what he looks to go up with. He goes up with the culture wing. And uh, we'll spot exactly how he manages to do as these scouts continue to work towards his base and look to 
begin isolating out those uh, those deer. But uh, going to be heading in towards the uh, directly in towards the uh, the guillotine, I guess you could say, or running the gauntlet, probably the better way to say it. But uh, managing to get through all six of those scouts, one of them almost going down, two of them pretty low on health. But now back towards the base of his uh, of of Lucifron. He is adding in. He's got the wooden fortress here to protect this all up. He's got great coverage in here. First of the warrior monks going to be coming out and looking on the mini map for those uh, those relics. So spotting them, plenty of them around. So we've got one, two, three up towards the north here. We've got one over towards the base of uh, Lucifron's opponent, and then one down to the south of Lucifron's base as well. So now these uh, these deer going to be picked up ever so slowly. Managing to come up. Ooh, he doesn't. He misses one. That's okay. That's all right. Um, and it looks like he's actually going to be able to get through. Um, so he's just going to right click back towards his base and he's going to be able to get out. But uh, he's going to be running into a bit of a wall over towards his opponent. So it might be a little bit of a dicey situation. We'll have to see exactly how he plays it. But uh, we'll take a look from his perspective and see what he spots. We don't have a second uh, Warrior Monk coming out just yet, despite it being rallied over towards that next relic. Looks like the scouts are probably going to be able to squeeze through the wall. It's so tight. It's so tight. They do manage to get through. You can see that uh, Hostel was trying his best to get through there. Now we've got the early knight taking out one of those uh, out one of those units. But now we've got the the re wall coming in for Hostel. I think he's realised that it, it wasn't closed off over here. It was earlier though, so I don't I don't know exactly what happened. He he had done this earlier in the game, but he must have cancelled it at some point. Like thinking, eh, you know, it's not that important. I don't need it. But like obvi obviously he did need it. Um, so yeah, curious decision making. But uh, now we've got more reinforcing or uh, more supplies coming in. That uh, warrior monk going to be continuing to pick up those relics. Second relic going to be coming in for him. We don't have. Do we have any more warrior monks coming out? It still doesn't look like we've got any more warrior monks. That one is continuing to head out towards the north. Going to be picking up the third relic. So just going for the one warrior monk. Very curious decision here. Lucifron macro, uh, questionable at this point, is stacking up 1,300 food. So not looking the strongest, but now getting some mana arms. And I really love the split that he's got going on here. So he's got mana arms coming out. He's got the stable. He's got the double archery range. So really not going any any units that you would normally suspect, which would be the, the horse archer. Not even like training them at this point. Just going full archers at this point. So we'll have to see exactly how he decides to play this one out. His opponent, on the other hand, Hostel, significantly behind when it comes to the scores. Sitting about 800 behind at this point in time. So it's going to be quite a bit, or 700 rather. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit for him to try and match this uh, up. Sacred Sight getting tapped just a second. They're going to be captured up, but that's only going to be why the Relic gets returned. And uh, now those... Oh my gosh, look at this. This is just... It's so frustrating, isn't it? The, the scouts automatically... Uh, they automatically find the pathway through. But... Um, yeah, just you, you can just spot it. Now, we've got a little bit of a raid coming through from the knight. It's barely got any line of sight as it tries to get through here, but it, it does manage to spot out the, the large wall segments now over towards the east of the base here. And uh, we've got plenty of these um, these deer still coming back. Uh, isn't it just so frustrating? Like, you can try your hardest to wall everything out, but at the end of the day, like, the, the scouts will find a way. They will find a path. They will make a path. Camel's going to begin coming out right now as well for Hostel. So this is a curious decision. So one of the things to note is that he's going Camel Archers, but he hasn't actually gone for the Military Wing. So the Military Wing is what gives the Camels the Camel Support ability uh, and gives them a lot of prominence in the Third Age, in my opinion. So it gives them that extra plus one armor, which is quite strong. Um, and obviously, they provide that debuff as well. You can see that the Knight is getting Camel Unease. It's debuff. So it deals 20% less damage just because there's nearby enemy Camels. So it's something to be very cognizant of uh, throughout this game is, is the effect that Camels may have on Lucifron's cavalry. Uh, but now those Archer Masses beginning to build. And he's really not making a lot of Horse Archers here. And when I say not making a lot, I mean, he's got a single Horse Archer that is out right now. Probably a misclick. He's actually going for a second one as well. Adding in the third Archery Range. And a lot of infrastructure down here towards the back of his base. So adding in a blacksmith back here as well. No real upgrades coming through for him just yet. Um, Macro is still looking a little bit questionable. He is adding in more infrastructure. Obviously, the uh, the economy for the... Uh, for, for the... Um, apologies. I'm, I'm thinking. For the Rus player, uh, can get quite out of control very quickly with those relics coming in. You can see he's managed to pick up four of the relics. Going to be looking out towards the fifth relic. Uh, fifth relic's up here towards the north. So he is looking... Uh, in that direction, but going to be losing... I think that's a warrior monk. Yeah, that was a warrior monk that went down. Um, so unfortunate for him. 
Gonna be climbing up a, a sacred site towards the north. Another warrior monk heading across. And Lucifron now we've got in the battle beginning to unfold. Apologies for missing the beginning of it, but it looks like the Lancers are gonna get in on the front line. Plenty of men at arms in there as well, trying their best to move through the stealth forest. Archers on the back line. We can see both players have got veterancy at this point. Warrior Monk going to be going down. It didn't get a tap off, so not going to be getting that plus one armor, but the men at arms being very strong at this point in time. Veteran Spearman going to be coming in as well for Hostel at this point, but uh, now it looks like we've got a bit of a push coming through from Hostel in response, so he manages to hold on. We've got the double men at arms coming out for both players here, so both of these players opting towards that tech tree or that tech line. Second sacred site going to be captured up here towards the north of the map as well, and Lucifron actually not looking the best at this point in time archer mass on the back line gonna be doing its best and we've got ourselves a little bit of an open battle in the middle here we've got the scouts coming out as well and spearmen gonna be going down and now we've got hostel that looks like the reinforcements are probably gonna be a bit too much for him to handle as those horse archers begin to begin to wail away at the uh, the archers of his opponent we've got a forward uh keep gonna be getting dropped down here it needs to come up faster it's not coming up fast enough and it never really does come up fast enough unless you're playing the chinese but now going to continue trading out these units camels v horse archers and uh keep in mind that camel unease is still going to get applied to these actually doesn't get applied to these units surely these guys are within the range oh the camel's gone down my apologies that camel has gone down, but it looks like this keep, this keep will actually get up. It will be able to hold the middle here. So there is a nice little berry patch that this is going to be defending. And now he's going to have no choice but to fall back. It sounds like that relic was actually taken whilst this action was going on. And Lucifer looking pretty good. So he's up about 500 score at the moment. He manages to hold on. His opponent's economy is not in a particularly good spot compared to his. So if we do a quick stock take, we see 54. Was it 54 villages? Yeah, 54 villages. One, two, three relics. Four, five relics with the fifth one coming in right now double sacred site towards the north he's got a sacred site down here towards the south that he's going to be able to take as well compare that over to his opponent who sits on 53 villages and that's just 53 villages even there's no sort of nothing else to it he's got the double town center up though so he's got that going for him that is that is for certain so if this game can con continue going on if we're talking about you know a 30 35 minute maybe even a 40 minute game then hostel can really start to you know begin making a lot of progress but for the moment there is definitely a window so the next maybe five to ten minutes for lucifron to actually uh capture this game and, and make sure that the opponent isn't really able to get ahead when it comes to the economy i will show you guys the income per minute just so you can see how far ahead lucifron is at the moment you can see him about 400 ahead on the food about 200 ahead on the wood about 300 ahead on the gold and a, a small amount behind on the stone, only 150. So works out to be how many villages. I'm not sure exactly how many it is, but never mind. That stone lead's going to be coming down very shortly, it seems, because those villages are going down. Now towards the west of the map, a couple of those sacred sites are going to get neutralized. And it looks like Hostel might be in a bit of a difficult spot, getting caught between uh, the two sides of the army for Lucifron. It looks like he's doing a pretty decent job here of trapping his opponent. Scouts on the front line as well, going to be able to tank this one up. You see the archers doing their best to actually pick them down, attack moving there, not focusing the units on the back line. So that's part of the reason why the scouts are so strong. He's got a huge amount of, econ of, of uh, health. We see that he does have Boyar's Fortitude as well. They've got up to 130 health. So a lot of uh, a lot of health points on those bad boys. But now the mass is continuing to build for Hostel at this point. And his archers are looking quite decent. And I'm curious what the response here is from Lucifer. I would expect that we would see a potential siege workshop coming down shortly from him because of the amount of archers that we are seeing out from his opponent. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that and see whether we do spot that one coming out. We'll have a quick a quick check down towards his base and see what we've got coming out. We've got the double, um, double blacksmith coming out. Second town center going to be going down for him as well. And those horse archers are going to be falling back towards the north now. And uh, the scout's going to be doing the exact same thing. We'll have a look at the production for him and see what he's got coming out so you can see he's just making horse archers at this point in time beginning to transition back into what i like to call the the mouth breather composition uh <laughs> it is scouts and horse archers that is literally it that's all you need to make scouts and horse archers draw all over your keyboard and that's the trick that is how you win with the rus but uh look he's rank one i'm sure he's going to be able to add in a few more units here but uh, now those horse archers really beginning to build. You can see that they've got plenty of, of uh, stats on them. He's got plus twos all around. So plus two uh, range, plus two range defense. Um, and he is looking very strong. Great micro here coming in from him as well. A little bit of an attack up towards the north. That spearman going to be able to do quite a lot of damage against that warrior monk. That warrior monk probably going to go down and get denied here. So he's not paying attention. Oh, he manages to pay attention. That, oh, that would have gone down. He manages to save it, capture the subsequent sacred site. Very, very nice from Lucifer from there. And that's what sets him apart. That's what makes him rank one, baby. Whew, that was close. That was really, really close. Towards the north, it looks like horse archers are going to get chased away. A couple of uh, crossbowmen are going to get thrown in the mix as well. Uh, I'm curious to see wh why we don't have uh, that uh, 
Why we don't have that Siege Workshop getting thrown down just yet, I'm still looking for it. Doesn't look like it's going to get thrown down. Probably at the front of the base, I think, is where you want to get it thrown down. But Lucifer I'm doing a great job of just sort of overwhelming his opponent, like continuing to run in. He's up in point-blank range right now. He knows that his opponent is in, in a position here where he can actually pick off a couple of units, and he just does it very, very well. Now towards the front of the base, he's also doing the same thing. So, you know, he doesn't actually need to add in Mangonels. He's just able to overwhelm his opponent with the, the Mouth Breather comp. But uh, now going to continue pushing forward up towards this wood line. He's going to be able to get in behind here as well. A bit of an overchop, unfortunately, coming out for Hostel. So he's going to have to head back towards his town center. 57 villagers for him. We'll do a quick stock take. 71 villagers now coming out for Lucifron. So he's beginning to build that lead on the village account as well as on the military front as well. And he is looking unstoppable at this point. I've got no clue as to how he actually loses this game. He is really looking great. Uh, still no farms out. Or actually, I take it back. He's got five farms that are out at this point in time. And now all sacred sites have been captured up for Lucifron. He is looking incredibly good at this point in time. Going up against, obviously, the Abbasid dynasty uh, on his Rus. Abbasid aren't a particularly strong sieve, in my opinion. Probably the weakest at the moment. And especially on a map like this, uh, which is quite open, it makes it very difficult for the Abbasid to succeed. So, look, Hostel has done his best. He's given his best uh, in this game. But I think that Lucifron is really managing to come out on top. Forcing him to be idle here once again. Being able to pick off these uh, archers as well at the same time. And he's just throwing away these units. He doesn't even care. It's just about at this point, um, forcing his opponent to idle up at this point. Now going to be continuing to run in, and so many units. He's just got units absolutely everywhere being rallied around. How many um, How many hunting cabins does he have? Can we see the hunting cabins? I can see two on the screen. I don't even know how to select hunting cabins. Sacred Site going to be going down up towards the north, but it doesn't even matter. Running now underneath the town center, just idling up his enemy, just sieging. He's literally sieging the town center with horse archers. He's like, yeah, I'm not too fussed. But uh, now the economy for his opponent is going to be in shambles because you can see, look at the, look at the, uh, the population difference. He's literally double his opponent's population at this point, continuing to force idle up, standing on top of the production at this point. And you've really got to start scratching your head and say, well, hold on a minute. How does Hostel even come back from this? I, like, th there's genuinely no actual way that he can do it. So really impressive stuff here from Lucifron. Great way for him to, to cap out this first game and, and do a really nice job as we enter into the uh, the next phase of this tournament. So good game. Well played over to Lucifron. His opponent is going to be tapping out. And there goes the good game. So, fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out the EGC TV Discord. I'm going to leave a link in the description over to that one. There's plenty of action over there. Constant events just like this one, which is part of the Winter Series. So make sure you check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll show you guys just a quick look at the timeline as well. I do see that request a lot. So seeing as these games are live, we can actually quickly look at it. But there you go. That is what you are looking at uh, for the uh, the village account. You can see the, the real difference there at the end coming through. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.